In this video, I'm going to be covering how to build a symmetrical wing out of foam board for an HB1 or HB2. I've already pre-marked my sheet of foam board. This particular sheet of foam board is the Flight Test waterproof foam board. However, you could also use the, any white foam board you get at a dollar store or other places. Uh, this particular foam board simply has the brown water resistant paper on it. It's kind of like a wax paper, so it uh, water will bead up on it and it so allows for a little bit easier painting, but structurally it's the same as white foam board. All right, so I've already pre-marked this sheet. The first section is four inches, then we have a three inch section, three inch section, a six inch section, and at the very bottom here, I have four one, one inch strips. So the first thing I wanna do after marking my sheet is I'm gonna be cutting all four of these one inch strips off. All right, now that I've cut my four one inch strips, I'm gonna take three strips. I'm gonna take one strip and set it aside. I'm gonna take three strips and put them in a stack. And I'm then going to glue all three of these together. Now I'm just using these weights to hold it down while the glue dries. Uh, these are two 10 pound weights. That's probably overkill for this job, but they're the weights I happen to have around. So we want this to be nice and flat and straight for the next step. So the next step is I'm going to score cut all three of these lines. And by score cut, what I mean is cut the top paper halfway through, but don't cut the bottom of the foam board. This foam board is a piece of foam with paper on both sides. Now that I've score cut these, I'm going to start peeling up the paper on these two middle three inch sections. So I'm gonna start on the edge and get the paper, start getting the paper to peel. And then I'm just going to peel peel that piece of paper off. And I'm also going to do the other side. couple little spots where it didn't totally peel up so I'm just gonna use my knife to get under here and clean those up. So 
Now in the center, I'm going to fold this back. This is the inside of the leading edge. So the next step is to do what's called a double bevel. So I'm going to cut a 45 degree angle into each one of these without cutting the paper seam that's on the middle here. So I'm going to line this up near the edge of the table, take my knife, and at a 45 degree angle, I'm going to get my knife in and then start slicing along at a 45 degree angle. So that's the first bevel. I'm going to flip it over and do the second bevel. There's the second bevel. And if I fold this over, and we take a look at the other side, you can see I didn't cut through the paper. If I cut through the paper, I could fix it with a little bit of packing tape. But the key to a good bevel is to have a very sharp knife. And a very sharp knife will allow the knife to slide through the foam without catching or having to saw back and forth. And it will result in a nice smooth bevel. Now, what I want to do is take the longer side and fold that towards me. But I have my stack of one inch strips that I previously cut. I'm going to place that just inside of the where the paper's peeled off. And then I'm going to be bending the top of the wing over this spar. So I'm going to glue this stack down and then bend the wing over. Apply a little bit of weight, while the glue dries. Right, now I'm going to take my fourth one inch strip and I'm going to put it under the trailing edge of the wing. I'm going to use a couple pieces of painter's tape or blue tape to just to temporarily hold this in place. And I'm going to put this tape on. 
making sure to stay away from the trailing edge. Now what I'm going to do is take the wing and I'm going to fold the wing over the spar. When I do this, I'm going to let the leading edge of the wing come up away from the table. So right here, we want to let the leading edge come up so that with the paper removed on inside, this foam will bend into our airfoil shape. So we want to fold it down like this. And on the trailing edge, we want this lift here by placing this piece of foam underneath here. It gives us some lift from the center of the wing back to the trailing edge. And when we look at the wing from the side here, we should see a, it should be symmetrical. If I don't fold it correctly, it won't be symmetrical. So we want it to, we want to let the lead, let the leading edge come up, and it should look symmetrical. Once I've done the test bend, just to get the foam to start conforming to the shape we want it in, I'm going to fold it back open. Then I'm going to take my glue gun and I'm going to put a bead of glue along the inside of the leading edge. And then along the top of the spar, okay. now I'm going to fold the wing over, make sure to let the leading edge come up. apply some weight to it, hold it down, and give it plenty of time for the glue to cool so that we get a good joint on the top of the spar. Now that the glue is cooled on the leading edge and underneath the spar, now I'm going to fold the wing along this score cut. I'm going to fold the wing up and fold it open like this. Now that the wing is folded open, I'm going to cut a hatch in the underside of the top skin. Now I want to cut it on three sides. So I'm going to cut it So I've cut it on three sides, but left the fourth side as a hinge. All right, the next step is to make sure that our servos are centered. It's important that the servo arm is 90 degrees and straight up before we install the servo in the wing. Once the servo is buried into the wing, it's hard to access the screw on the end of the servo arm unless we cut a hatch into the wing. So to do a cleaner install, we're going to make sure that our servos are centered up before they go into the wing. And I'm doing that with this little servo tester, just set to center. This could also be done with a receiver and your radio. All 
All right, so now I'm gonna make a couple little servo trays just to make sure that these servos, once they're glued in, that they don't shift. So I'm just gonna take a couple scrap pieces of foam, trace out my servos on the foam, and then I'm just gonna cut that shape out of the little foam block. Gonna mark where the where the little servo arms are and make little slits for those. And so you gotta see I got a nice tight fit of this piece of foam around the servo. All right, now that I've got my servos in the servo trays, I'm going to place these five inches from the center so that these leads have enough space to reach the center. And I'm just gonna take a little piece of blue tape and I'll lay these leads together in the center and I'm just gonna temporarily tape them down. So I'll figure out where my servo tray is going to be here, and I'm just going to just going to mark the corners here. Give myself just a little guide, so I know where to put my glue. Now that my servos are glued in, I'm going to take the top of the wing and I'm going to fold it down just enough that the servo arms are going to make indents on the bottom of the, the skin here. And what that's going to allow me to do is, now I know where the servo arm is going to be, now I can cut a slot for the servo arm based on this mark. And now I can see my servo arms in the slots. So at this point, everything's glued in and I'm ready to close the wing. So I'm going to put a bead of glue along the, the trailing edge, on the inside of the trailing edge, and I'm gonna fold this down 
and apply pressure until it cools. Alright, now that the glue is cooled on the trailing edge, I'm going to remove the blue tape from this trailing edge support piece. I'm just going to peel it away. Now that my trailing edge has cooled, I'm going to flip my wing over and this portion here is the Alveron and so what I'm going to do is score cut it along the bottom edge, trailing edge of the wing. So using the trailing edge of the wing as a guide, I'm going to score cut all the way along it. Once it's score cut, I'm going to fold it out away like this. Now I'm ready to add a single bevel to this surface. But before I do that, I'm going to find the center point. and measure two inches on each side of the center point. Now I'm going to cut this four inch section out of the center of the surface. Cut it off here. And put that scrap piece aside. So now I have two independent Elverons and I can do my single bevel on each one.
So now I can move my surfaces and I didn't cut through the paper on this side on either one. If I had I trimmed through the paper and had a little hole here, I could put some packing tape along here to reinforce this. So you can see I got I can deflect these up and down because of that 45 degree bevel. The next step is to install the control horns. I've already set these control horns up with a quick connect. This allows me to just slide this rod, push rod in and then at the right distance tighten it down with this little grub screw to tighten it down. So what I want to do is take my push rod and I want to put it into my control horn. I'm just going to work it in here and get it turned. And I'm going to see where this lays out onto my aileron, Alveron. And line this up, I want the quick connect to line up on the push rod. So right about there is good. So I'm going to mark where my, I'm just actually going to slide this right on here and then I can mark, I want this to be straight so I'm going to line this up and mark where I want the control horn to go. Now that I have my mark, I'm going to put a slit in the top of layer of paper and then push, I'm just going to work the control horn into that slit, just compressing the foam a little bit as I work the control horn into the foam. Once I've got it in here, I want to line up the control horn the bottom of the control horn should be lined up with the hinge edge so that the quick connect is directly above the hinge. Once I'm happy with the position and the fit, I'm going to remove it. Put some hot glue into these depressions. And install the control horn. I just want to make sure that it's a 90 degree angle between the control horn so it's standing straight up. And you can see that at the center position my push rod is too long. This surface will not be able to flex up without catching this. So the next thing I'll have to do is trim off my push rod a little bit because I made it a little bit too long to start with. Okay. So you can see how as I move this up, the push rod is catching on the surface. So I'm going to trim that off. Alright, so now I'll be able to get quite a bit of deflection without the push rod hitting the surface. So the next thing I want to do is add the wing tip end caps. So right now this is open and I want to put a plate on, e on the end of each wing tip to close this up. So I'm going to take a look at it. If it's uneven, I'm going to trim this just a little bit so it's nice and even along the outer edge.
So the next step is to add the wing tip caps. So I've taken two seven inch pieces that I cut from the leftover one inch strip and I've glued them to onto the wing tip. And what I'm going to do next is take my knife and trim these down to size so that they match the wing. 